First two years, I was suffering quite badly. I lost all my savings. So I endured and endured. After two and a half years, we start to see some light. I don't call myself a chef. I'm a hawker. Hainanese chicken rice, Hokkien mee, cha kwe tiao, Singapore laksa. These are some of Singapore's most beloved and iconic dishes. We know all of them well. But did you know that there's a Singaporean here in Bali cooking up authentic versions of these Singaporean foods? This is Andrew, a Singaporean living in Bali together with his Indonesian wife and son. Andrew has built a chain of cafes here in Bali, serving up authentic Singaporean dishes, bringing a taste of home to all of us overseas Singaporeans here, as well as spreading the love of our food to everyone else. Today, I met up with Andrew at his new food outlet in Changu, a uniquely Singaporean corner in Bali, which he has named after our own Bugis Street. As is typical of overseas Singaporean, I was here in Bali sniffing around for a good chakwe tail. And that search led me to Andrew! <laughs> okay, hello, uh, I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm turning 50 in a couple of months' time. Uh, basically, I moved to Bali from Thailand 12 years ago. And somehow or other, just fell in love with Bali and been living here since. I started my first uh, cafe about six years ago. Uh, introducing uh, Hainanese chicken rice, Singapore style, you know, to the, to the people here. I know you have many restaurants here now. Uh, like... not, not many. Yet, <laughs> but, okay. <Not> many. <laughs> uh, now, technically, I have four. Uh, starting my fifth next month, and then uh, probably in November, my number six. Oh, wow. So it's going to be yeah. six restaurants. And, and two Andrew more projections in uh, next year. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, in other parts of Bali. Yeah. Business is booming. <laughs> yeah, I think. People miss Singapore food, actually. Yeah. Care to show us some of the others? Sure, sure, no problem. Okay, come. Okay, let's, let's go. Come on. <laughs> uh, so, this is my flagship store. We started to boom from here, like, two years ago. Oh, yeah, wow. When, when in the midst of COVID. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so basically, this is my second outlet. I, I opened this because my previous place, kitchen, is a bit too small. Who are your main clientele? I think mostly uh, expats, Singaporeans living in Bali, uh, expats who visit Singapore, they miss Singapore food, and some tourists are by word of mouth. And what about the local Indonesians? Are they part oh, of Oh, they the... do. Those, those who actually who studied in Singapore before, worked yeah, in Singapore before, yeah, they, they tend to miss Singaporean food. Yeah. And, okay, so like say what are your top top five dishes? Basically, my Hanani chicken rice, my laksa, my Hokkien mee. We deliver to Jakarta three to four times a month and my chakwe tiao. So hot selling at the Hokkien Mee to Jakarta. Even my chicken rice, uh, sometimes people hang carry to Bali Papan and Medan, 20, 30 packs. Let me show you my other place. Ah, okay, uh, oh, oh. Okay, now Mukata is very popular in Thailand, in, in Singapore, yeah. So six years ago, I started Googling and I realized that there's no Mukata in Indonesia. Ah. And I was like, that's it, right? So I was the first who introduced Mukata to Indonesia. Uh, ah. and, and actually, Taught them. A lot of bloggers came and even tried, you know, oh, because they, they were curious what is actually mukata. Yeah. yeah. And then through through the years, people start to know us. Surprisingly, even though the food's so authentic, Andrew's background wasn't actually in F and B or even being a chef. I was doing a business consultation for luxury hotels throughout Asia. Yeah. And then uh, when my girlfriend, like seven years ago, she got pregnant, you know. And then, uh, of course, I was divorced in Singapore. So my, my kids were like, hey, Dad, you know, you're going to have a baby, so you should stop working, you know? Because I'd be leaving the baby like six months every year. Oh, you fly around a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I was sitting down wondering, what am I supposed to do, you know? So back then, like six years ago, there's about 14 uh, cafes or, or restos in Bali selling Hainanese chicken rice, Singapore, using the Singapore name, right? So as a Singaporean, we get upset when it doesn't taste like that, eh? So having a traditional recipe on my own, then I decided, okay, let's start the Pupanda. The Peranakan family heritage is where Andrew draws his food inspirations from. My mum is more like a Peranakan cook and stuff. Then uh, we have a lot of secret recipes of the old men, the aunties and uncles in Singapore, the hawkers. So we a lot of try and errors, you know, until something worked out, you know, something like that. But that's so, very brave, yeah, we, right? We have to be versatile. So, well done. Were you frightened at the start? You know, because, I mean, um, okay, during my first two years, I was suffering quite badly. I lost all my savings. 
I even get you my mom to all your savings. Yeah, I even get my mom to send me money so that I can pay my rent. We are like having plain rice with omelette at home, you know. But I stayed on because I don't believe that our Singapore brain couldn't make it in Indonesia. So I endured and endured. After two and a half years, we start to see some light. And then with the pandemic, it was like skyrocketed all the way, just like that. Boom. So that's the kind of grit Andrew brought into his business. And luckily, it has paid off handsomely. I started Napopana doing laksa and chicken rice first. Um, I think I spent about 30 grand, Sing dollars, 30,000. How would you guesstimate maybe now the value of all your enterprises? Now, now I think my flagship store is worth about 40,000 Sing, my flagship store. Uh, on and off, smaller ones plus this, this, this is new, about two months old. This is about 60,000 here, so far. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I think all in all, close to 150. Lah. Wow, from 30 to 150. Yeah. And uh, maybe, if you don't mind sharing, <laughs> what's like the monthly total overall profit? Like? So, uh, uh, something above 20. Lah. Oh, wow, okay. It's actually not significantly different from what Andrew made back home in Singapore, but there are other reasons why he lives here in Bali now. Back in Singapore, you know, having three kids in poly and, and university, I take on three jobs, you know. I, I work like 40, 16 hours a day. I think Art. Singaporeans will understand that. I'm holding three handphones, you know, making about 15,000 on average per month. I don't have any savings. 15,000 a month and no, no savings you, you in got Singapore. You've your, got your home, you've got your car, you know, the wow. entertainment, bringing people around, you know, the spending, it's, it's a bit tough. It's, it's so very expensive. You know, <laughs> going back to Singapore for one week, it's like my mom can come here and be a queen for three weeks. In Bali, we are more relaxed. That's we are more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the pace of living here much better. Yeah. Also, yeah. So, 15K in Singapore, three jobs. And now you're a businessman in Bali, more than 20k a month profit. It's paid off, yeah, babe. Nice. Yeah, finally. <laughs> finally. Congratulations. Thank so you, happy. thank you. So, like, other than this, uh, all these uh, wonderful little restaurants you have going, um, do you have, like, uh, other investments, other income sources? We, <laughs> <laughs> we, we do, because my, my wife is from Central Java, Jogja. So we have some uh, properties there mm -hmm. that we are renting out. Uh, of course, a bit of bonds, uh, yeah, some shares, market, stock, and of course, recently, crypto. Roughly what percentages of your portfolio is composed of? Uh, I, my, my philosophy since the past, if, if I want to do investment, it has to be like 30% of my income okay. Okay, for investment purposes. Okay, interesting. If you're a savvy Singaporean investor like Andrew, you might be interested to learn about the attractive welcome rewards offered by today's video sponsor, Weibo. Licensed by MAS, Weibo Singapore is a one-stop online brokerage allowing you to trade US and Hong Kong stocks and ETFs and US options. Weibo prides itself on being the true zero commission broker, which is great news for the frequent trader. Weibo also supports fractional share trading for US equities. Definitely a nice feature to have, especially for investors with smaller capital. Right now, get up to 100 US dollars worth of Google fractional shares plus 50% discount off FWD travel insurance plans when you sign up for a Weibo brokerage account. All you have to do is fund your Weibo account with 1,965 Sing dollars or its equivalent in US dollars. Maintain that balance for at least 30 days and make six trades in the US market within that time. These rewards basically mean your investment portfolio gets a free $100 head start. So if you have a spare couple of thousands idle cash you have yet to utilize, why not get some free Google shares before the offer ends? Not to forget, discounted travel insurance for those upcoming holiday trips. Grab it now before the offer finishes. Now that things are going so well, it's surprising to learn that Andrew's main motivation for continuing to open up one outlet after another across Bali isn't exactly in pursuit of more profits or success. So basically, the reason why I've been opening a lot of outlets is because some of my stuff, they are so close to me, you know, they're like my own children, right? So by opening more outlets, they can progress in their life. I give them one outlet, you take care of this, you get a share. You know, if not, they're going to work for me for, for many years and they will be just like that, you see. So through me, they have the opportunity to like own their own business and, and stuff. 
I mean, I have met some other Singaporeans here. What I have heard from them is that Andrew has a heart of gold. There was some talk that during the pandemic, you helped out the locals in Bali here greatly. And actually, it's not really helping. Uh, since last time, you know, even the Gojek or the Grab, when they come, we offer them free drinks. And sometimes they look pale, right? We ask, have they eaten? You know, we took them something. Uh, my ex staff who are jobless, I feed them every day, they come for meals. Even there are some uh, Singaporeans living in Bali jobless, you know, husband lost their job. Uh, as and when I do some special, I will just send it to them. And they felt bad, you know, but again, I told them, look, I'm, I'm like your big brother here in Bali. You know, just, just take it. And because when, when they're doing okay, they're like dining with me like three, four times a week, you know what I mean? So, That's and it, it worked out like, throughout. During the pandemic, I shoot like crazy. People start to know me well. I, I, a lot of my Balinese staff even told me that's karma. Eh? Yeah, whatever good you send out, it comes back yes, at you yes, through yes, the universe. Yes, yeah? yes. So, do you consider yourself successful now? Successful? Not yet, because now I start to have a lot of children. <laughs> eh? So, when they are all settled down, then I might say, yeah, I, okay, you know. Children meaning your Bali staff, right? Yeah, all your my staff. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and your cute little boy. Percy. Yeah, my children, yeah. 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 So any regrets? Anything you might have done differently if you look back? I'm... Actually, I, I don't regret anything that I did before. I, I believe in things happen for a reason. Imagine if I'm working my previous job. During COVID, I'd be jobless for two years. Right? So things, things does happen for a reason. And then if you're in Bali, you know, island of the gods, I think if we do good, it get taken care back. of, it yeah, comes, comes back, back, back to you. Yeah. So Andrew's put out a lot of good count <laughs> and things are flowing marvelously for yeah. him after all these years. Yeah. And I still live a very simple kind of life, you know, same home, dress, slippers and shorts. Only difference is we walk around, we feel like eating in a restaurant, let's go without thinking, you know. In the past, you have to check our account, how much we have left, how much to spend. So now it's like, let's go. You know? we, we know that we can afford to pay for the meal. Yeah. yeah. You did good, Andrew. You did good. Oh, no, I'm thinking about <laughs> Andrew is inspirational. He's brave. He ventured into something so foreign and new in so many ways outside of Singapore. Even when he didn't have specialist knowledge or the safety net or comfort of the home environment. This story is again reinforcement of how the cycle of life and new ventures just goes. Nobody starts something new and reaches success over the course of the day. There will always be a fallow period before you can see the fruits of your labour start to emerge from the soil. We are all Singaporeans outside of Singapore. We each have our own stories to tell. But I'm so happy to be able to share Andrew's story here today with you. His is not just a success story of business and investment and numbers. He's out here in Bali sharing our awesome food and culture here with other people from other countries and bringing the warmth of home back to the lonely hearts of the Singaporean community here. How meaningful is that? Thank you for staying with me till this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you'd like to see more stuff from us. See you next Saturday. Bye!